Today's video is sponsored by the new Paperlike 2.0, which makes writing or drawing with any Apple Pencil on any iPad feel more like paper. Hey, it's Chris, and today we're gonna be checking out the brand new iPad OS Beta. Now, as you can see, I've got a fresh install loaded up on my 11-inch iPad Pro. So everything we're about to check out, that's my first time using all of this stuff. So the reaction is gonna be raw and real. So here's my first look at the home screen. And as you can see, got some new widgets over here, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna have to dive into those. I like to look at these widgets right off the bat. I can already tell you though, I'm gonna wish that these widgets could live over here on this side of the screen. And I just wish that they could be placed wherever, honestly. But everything's gotta start somewhere. So I'm glad that the new widgets are at least available on the home screen. <laughs> and actually, as you can see, the widgets aren't all lining up exactly how they should here in the beta. Well, look, one of the first things I wanna check out is the new now playing screen in the Apple Music app. And we're gonna to get to all the crazy other features, including Scribble in just a second. But first, Andy Minio. Might as well check out Work in Progress, one of my favorite albums. Here comes OTOD. Oh, yeah, this is cool with uh, the lyrics over here on the right. So this is just a nice now playing screen, right? This is an enhancement. Yeah, so what's wrong with this? Nothing, you can just get this set up and see what's going on while you're working, uh, right? If you're not actually working on your iPad itself. All right, the big new thing for me that I'm all excited about is the new Scribble feature with the Apple Pencil. All right, so try Scribble, this is what happens. Try handwriting here, I'm gonna say, hey, it's Chris and it transcribed that perfectly. There's an app out there called Nebo, and I think they're gonna be pretty disappointed that this is a feature now baked into iPad OS. <laughs> All right, so let's see how you delete stuff. Remove editable text just by scratching it out. All right, delete and remove. Delete and remove. That works great. All right, so what about selecting? Draw a line through or circle text to easily select it. All right, let's give that a try. I'm gonna circle, wow, select it. What if I select a bunch? That's awesome. Uh, let's draw a line through. And it selects it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna love this. Erase. Oh, select. This is great. All right, let's learn how to insert. Tap and hold in any text area to create a space to handwrite. All right, so let's put something right here. Oh, look at that. And I'm gonna handwrite in there. Okay, nitro, coffee. Now I got it. All right, so this and word are running together. So I'm gonna draw a line between them and separate them, that works flawlessly. And cool, I think I'm ready to try Scribble all over the place. Let's go to Safari first. So I'm up in the URL bar here, and let's say I wanna go to applehype.com. Let's see how it works. All right, Apple, hype, oops, nope, scratch that out, hype.com. There was a space in between, drew a line down, moved it back together, and then you have this extra little panel that pops up down here with a search button. Wow, here's what this is doing. This is making handwriting with the Apple Pencil as powerful as typed text. Does that make sense? All right, let's try this with something else. I'm gonna launch IA Writer, which is all about writing. Uh, hey, can I use my Apple Pencil for this? app. Yes, I can. And it just typed it. I was typing all over the place and it put it in a nice straight line there. This is great. All right. So what if I want to create a calendar event using nothing but the Apple pencil? I'm going to say new. I'm going to say title. Hey, it's Chris. Her, it's Chris. <laughs> no, let's erase the whole thing. And let's say, Hey, it's Chris. Hey, it's chins. Oh, come on. Either something's wrong with Siri recognizing stuff or I have really bad handwriting, which is ironic because I used to be known in grade school for the best handwriting. Let's try this one more time. Hey, it's Chris. There we go. Yeah, so one thing that I'm seeing is that it's gonna take some practice, I think. Somebody, maybe me, is gonna need to create some tutorials on how to nail the scribble experience, I think. So I should point out, there's this new pen tool and it's got some text on it. You select that when you just want it to convert into text immediately. That's right here. But then this one is the regular one where you can just do your handwriting. All right, something else that's new and that could be kind of exciting is the new universal search. They've totally redone this 
to make it, I think, feel a little bit more like the Mac side of things has been acting. So command spacebar to bring up your search doesn't kick you out of an app anymore. Let's search for Andy Minio and see what's up. All right, so this is what the search interface looks like. You can see I got some web results here. It's asking me if I wanna search in notes and then obviously in music as well. All right, but let's try it from an app. I'm in my news app in the Apple section and I'm perusing the news and then all of a sudden I remember, oh wait, I wanted to search for that article that I wrote on WWDC the other day. All right, so let's bring up the search and let's say WWDC. And boom, it brings up some of the notes that I've typed and some other stuff related to WWDC right in the search field there without kicking me out of this app that I'm in, which is gonna be great. Oh, so this is interesting. If you don't have your keyboard connected, just swipe down with one finger and it brings up this search box right here. And it's gonna make a serious suggestion, like here's a note for handoff, continue from Chris's 12.9 inch 2020 iPad Pro. That's always useful, Apple's handoff stuff. You got your Siri suggestions also sitting across here and you can do a search using your voice. So let's search for Photoshop. Let's go like this, let's do voice seven plus 82, 89. All right, so let's search for a specific mind node file and see if it comes up. iPad only setup. And as you can see, it found it right away, right there, mind node document, iPad only setup. Now, one thing that I like about this universal search here is that it's minimal. It's not taking over your screen and that's a theme from WWDC this year. When you get calls on your iPhone, it's a minimal experience. It's not gonna take over your screen. Siri now, which we're gonna get to, is not a full screen experience. It doesn't take over your screen. And now search also isn't going to take over your screen. I think this is a good trend to see this year. Just for fun, let's see what happens when I search for nitro coffee. Oh wow, it just brought up that new handwritten note where I talked about nitro coffee from just a couple of minutes ago. It searched through my handwriting to find that. That's great. One of the other things that came to iPadOS this year is a new sidebar, and it's gonna allow for more information to be displayed. And this is what it looks like in files, although Apple showed off what the new sidebar is gonna look like in Apple Music and in photos and in several places. But the big thing here is that developers are gonna be able to get a hold of this and build it into their apps as well. One thing I like here in Finder is that you don't have to swipe down like you used to have to to switch views. You can just tap this and you can do icons, you can do list, or you can do columns just right there. And that's much better. All right, so now we talked about it, let's actually go ahead and check out that new Siri functionality. So let's activate it. And there it is. That's totally different. It's listening to me, wow. Okay, paused. It didn't still understand what I was saying. <laughs> so same old Siri in that sense but I like this interface a lot better. Can you tell it's down in the corner there and it's not taking over the whole screen? So let's interact with it a little bit. Let's say launch calendar app. That's a really cool animation. The animation really doesn't matter that much. I just really like how it works. What reminders are on my list for today? One moment. You have 15 reminders due this morning. Remind me to drink a nitro coffee every day at 9 a.m. There it is. I like this. This is a much better way for Apple to display Siri. And I like that you can dig into apps right here in the corner without having to open up that app and jump out of whatever you were doing. What's the weather like in Cupertino? It's currently partly cloudy and 73 degrees in Cupertino, California. Who won the World Series three years ago? The Astros lost a close one to the Dodgers in game one of the World Series on October 24th, 2017. All right, here's something that really flew under the radar at WWDC on purpose, by the way, right? Apple mentioned it on a slide, but not verbally. They weren't gonna celebrate it, and that's the fact that you can now change your default email and browser apps. If you don't wanna use Safari for everything, or if you don't wanna use Apple Mail, for everything, you don't have to anymore by default. I can't find it, I can't figure it out. This is super frustrating. Well, guess what, we're gonna skip that, we're moving on, but I'll tell you this, so far Apple has only announced that it's gonna work with being able to set your default email client or app and default browser. So I don't know that you're gonna be able to switch out other things, like can you set a default camera app that isn't Apple's camera app? 
it doesn't sound like that's the case quite yet. If you own an iPad or you're looking to get one soon, then check out today's sponsor, Paperlike, now in the second version, which is an accessory that makes it feel and sound more like you're using real paper when you're working with an Apple Pencil. One of my favorite things about the new Paperlike is that it's much clearer to watch movies or view content through it when you're not writing or drawing. Paperlike actually gives you more control with your Apple Pencil thanks to that paper-like resistance that it offers. And yes, it really makes a difference. Plus, it reduces glare and fingerprints, which who doesn't want that? Paperlike's great for anyone who wants to use apps like Apple Notes or Notability or Procreate or Affinity Photo, among many others. When you place an order, you're gonna get two Paperlike covers plus application accessories, along with free worldwide shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You can place a Paperlike 2.0 order using the link down in the description. So there's a quick demo of a few of the new features that we got with iPadOS 14. But I will say, I just wanna talk about here at the end of this video, there were several things that didn't come to the iPad at WWDC this year, and a lot of it was disappointing to a lot of people. I think the iPad to a lot of Apple users felt underrepresented or a little bit neglected this year. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for checking it out. And if you wanna see more of my WWDC coverage, then check out the links down below and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Don't forget to check out applehype.com and I'm at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K on Instagram and Twitter. And I'll catch you guys in the next video or podcast. Later.